Fifteen seconds. Can I move? No. You've had your picture taken before, haven't you? Not of my corona discharge. I can't see nothing but his hand, Governor. <clears throat> Forty-five seconds. Maybe his corona fell off. I'm photographing the unseen. Invisible energy. Now my Uncle Bertie, he had invisible energy. Hardly ever got up out of his chair. Quiet. Except for Mills. 60 seconds. One more minute, Charlie. What is being transferred from your hand to that photographic plate are rays beyond the visible spectrum. 15 seconds. Invisible to the human eye, but not to my special film. No! No! Hey! The post came. The post came! You've just ruined an hour's work, and all you can think of to say is the blasted post came. I don't right. swear. Stop. Ain't swear. I was right. Silence. Silence. And if I did have anything to say, it would be that a do not disturb sign is quite useless if it is placed on the inside of the door. Phipps, tea's ready. If you want this answer today, it'll have to be done before lunch. I'm leaving on the two o'clock train. Wait a minute. What do you mean you're taking the two o'clock train? I have important work for you to do here. I told you a week ago that I was going to visit my Aunt Effie. Well, I withdraw my permission. She's very dear to me. She brought me up when my parents died. And she's ill. Oh. How long will you be gone? A week. A week? Did you hear that, Phipps? A week! Fine, go. At least I'll have some peace in which to do my work. No one sneaking around, turning on other people's lights. Professor, the sugar. Mm. In your tea. Yes. You don't take sugar in your tea. Aunt Effie, Caroline. About the same. We're trying to make a rest. Gareth said it was her heart. Yes, it's not too serious. But she is such a difficult patient. Can I see her? Lady Euphemia is resting, Miss Jenny. I'm sure it'll be all right. Just a few minutes, though. What have you been doing to yourself? <laughs> it's very naughty of you to be ill. Ill? Not ill, child. Just a bit tired, that's all. But, uh, Minnie, stop fussing. You may go, Minnie. Oh, Minnie, are you well? Thank you, Miss Jenny. Yes. You mustn't talk too long, Aunt. 
So, he finally let you come to see me, did he, this Professor Deverell person? Of course. He's really quite considerate. But is he a suitable employer for a young lady? <laughs> you know, you've no need to work, child. You could live here with me. I love my work. I see. And your Professor Deverell, does he love his work too? He's devoted to science. I think I should know much more about him. From your letters, I thought he was a monster. Oh, not a monster. It's just a bit demanding. Demanding? Forgetful. I have to look after him. Oh? <laughs> oh, see. Poor old thing. <laughs> Poor old thing. <laughs> How like her you are. <laughs> Lady Maud. She's lovely, isn't she? <laughs> I do hope I do look like her. You do. I've seen her. You've seen her? Twice now. The last time was a few nights ago. On the stairs. I'm glad you've come back, Jenny. I'm frightened. Past weeks, I felt it growing. Something strange. Here in the house. It's not the same as when we were children. It's cold. It's threatening. You're tired. I'm sure it's just Aunt Effie's illness. All the responsibility. I should have come sooner. At least you're here now. Oh, Jenny. <laughs> What's the matter? Caroline and I were just talking about... when we were children. I suppose she was telling you about the ghost. He doesn't understand. It's damn nonsense, the whole thing. Nonsense? You can call it nonsense. I know what I saw. My darling, why don't you go upstairs and lie down? Take some of that stuff the doctor gave you. Please let her alone, Jenny. What I... You know how highly strung she is. Caroline's always been very sensitive. I'll call it that if you like. The old doctor said it's her nerves. Gareth, what's the matter? Have you both been having a rotten time? Yes, pretty rotten, actually. It's something to do with this place. When we first married, I told Caroline we should have our own farm. But she felt she had to stay here and look after Aunt Effie. Oh, Gareth. I feel awful being so useless. But now I'm here, Caroline and I were always very close. I just hope it won't make matters worse. Thank you, Fred.
Set my watch by you, Henry. It's three for you this morning, Mr. Phipps. Ha-ha, uh -huh, Miss Jenny. Oh, God! Directly, no. But nevertheless, you were the causal agent. What? I call it the automatic eye. It emits a beam of light, which, when broken, breaks the electric circuit, which triggers the mechanism, which opens the door and closes the door. Time saving. I'm going to put one on the supply closet door. Open. Closes. Oh, very nice. Another nail in the coffin of your serving classes. A letter from Miss Jenny. I suppose you'll have her type right wired up next week, so there's no need for it to come back. That would be a good idea, Phipps, if it hadn't been thought of already. She's not. Pack our bags, fit. We're leaving immediately. Yes, sir. Time saving. Sold important business. What about my corona discharge? I did take the morning off. Sorry, Jenny. Something's more important. What, Jenny, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter, don't worry. Just a ghost. Just a ghost? Aunt Effie, have you ever seen Lady Maud? Never. But do you believe that she actually is here? I mean, her ghost. Oh, yes. I presume every family has one. I mean, any family of any standing. Lady Maud is ours. She hasn't been seen since your father was killed in South Africa. Your mother saw her that night. Oh, I didn't know. I don't know what use it was her appearing here. Didn't your mother a bit of good? I have no use for ghosts. Never in the right place at the right time. <coughs> what on earth is that extraordinary? 
important, you know, is... Aunt Effie, let me help you. I'm quite capable of moving on my own, child. <laughs> Heavens, it's Professor Deverell. In that contraption. Oh, someone must help the poor old thing. He's had a long journey. He'll be exhausted, won't he? So were you, Aunt. Come along. We must go down and meet him. Aunt Effie, you shouldn't. Nonsense. I, I'm fine. <laughs> Minnie, get down quickly to Crabtree and tell him that it's old Professor Deverell calling and he'll need a hand. Yes, ma'am. Impressive. I always knew Miss Jenny was a lady. Possessions do not make a lady, Miss. Hello, Miss Thank you. Don't try and do it on your own, sir. Just lean on me. I, I think I can manage better. Thanks. Uh, your coat, sir, allow me. <laughs> Professor, how nice to see you. What? I don't want to upset my aunt. We'll talk later. What a lovely surprise. Professor, my aunt, Lady Euphemia. Professor Deverell. Lady Euphemia, I hope you're well. Never better, thank you. I'm delighted to meet you, Professor. Jenny has spoken of you often. But uh, what brings you here? My niece was not expecting you. No, it's an unexpected trip. Research. Research? Yes, there's an old bridge near here, one of the first ever built out of cast iron. I, I want to have a look at it. Hmm, old Arn Bridge. It's been there for over a hundred years. That's why I want to study it. Did you know, Lady Euphemia, that when they first built in cast iron, they used it as if it were wood? No, I didn't. And I'm not sure I care. No. Now that you're here, Professor, you stay, of course. I should be quite cross if you don't. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Crabtree. Back home, I'm butler, valet, odd chop man. Everything rolled up into one, you might say. But you have a cook and housemaids, of course. Not so blooming likely. No, uh, Miss Jenny gives me a hand with a grub now and then. It's a modern household, you might say. Democratic. Modern household, modern women. At the end of all of us, if you ask me. For some of us, no doubt. At least we don't have ghosts in our place like some. Don't speak of them. Why? You've seen one? Well, no. I haven't seen one. But I can hear them of a night, squeaking and gibbering up in our attic. Just like mice they are. And Miss Jenny has seen Lady Maud only this week. Who said that girl? I hear Miss Jenny telling Miss Cal. I mean, Mrs. Makepeace. You want to close your ears when you're above stairs. It's a judgment on Miss Jenny, if you ask me. <coughs> what for, Crabapple? Consulting with the likes of you, Mr. Phipps, and your foreign professor. Deserting her ancestral home. No good ever came to a Martin who left the manor. You're sure it was the figure of a woman? It was Lady Maud, just as in the picture. Do you believe me, Professor? I swear to you, I saw it with my own eyes. I'm a scientist. What I believe depends upon the facts. You've never displayed signs of hysteria in my presence. I believe you saw something. Here. I reached this point and heard something. Locked up. I've had some men up on the tower patching it up. Endless job. Trouble is, it's 700 years old, so when the frost comes, the old stone crumbles. I'm afraid that's what happened. You don't believe in ghosts then, Mr. Macy? I certainly do not. This is just an unfortunate accident. 
Well, but what about the figure Jenny saw? The figure of a woman in the tower. I have no idea. Perhaps you caught the bug from Caroline, Jenny. Perhaps she was sleepwalking, dreaming. Well, women are meant to have intuitions, that sort of thing, aren't they, Professor? But you're a scientist. I'm sure you know more about that sort of thing than I do. I don't know any more about women's intuition than you do, Mr. Makepeace. Look, my advice is, if you're afraid of ghosts, lock your door at night. Excuse me. Lady Maud was married in our little church on October the 21st, 1642. The next day, her husband, Richard, rode off to join King Charles's army at Edge Hill. He was killed in the battle, leading his regiment. Lady Maud simply shut herself in her room, the room Jenny has now, never came out. She died of a broken heart then? She refused to eat. She died of starvation. There's always been a streak of willfulness in the women of our family. And how often does she appear? Goodness, I haven't the slightest idea. A ghost doesn't appear on schedule, Professor, as if she were the train to Liverpool. My father was of the belief, and I'm sure someone must have told him this because he was a man singularly without imagination, that Lady Maud would only appear when a member of the family was about to die. Don't be dramatic, Caroline. I'm the one who should be worried, and I feel splendid. In fact, I feel better than I have for weeks. Father, you said very many microlimo. La piace is the Allow me, Jane. We do not require your assistance, Mr. Phipps. If I may say so, neither your training nor your appearance qualify you to appear in my dining room. Don't worry, Mr. Crabapple. You... I'll answer the door. You certainly will not. Fred. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Holmes. I'll see him, Crabtree. In here, my lady. Why not? Another friend of yours has just arrived. What at this hour of the night? Hello. Charlie. I got lost. <laughs> Wait, it's a lucky thing I found my way here. You see, I was working on this story, a special piece on a bridge nearby. It's the oldest iron bridge in England. How very interesting, young man. You stay, of course. Thank you. Charlie, I don't want this to turn into a social gathering. This is a difficult investigation. I don't need a crowd. What sort of investigation? Phipps, shut that door and lock it. I mean, if Jenny's in danger, I have a right to know. And... What's all this up about ghosts? She's seen it. Jenny saw something. What it is or who it is is yet to be determined. That's why I'm here. Now, you don't really believe in all this ghost stuff, do you, Jenny? I mean, somebody's playing a joke. It's no joke, Charlie. Somebody tried to kill her. I saw her, Charlie. It was Lady Maud. I can't explain it. She disappeared into thin air. It's a judgment on Miss Jenny. That's what they say in the servants' quarters. Piffle. Pure, peasant, superstitious piffle. Here's to Lady Maud deciding to take another little stroll tonight. Oh, yeah. I'll drink to that.
You didn't see anything, Pips. Neither did I. It was the moonlight. Moonlight? Yes. An optical illusion. Nothing more. I'm sorry. What is it? Just a silly misunderstanding. You've disturbed Aunt Effie. I'll have to give her a sedative. Jenny, I think it would be best if your friends left at the earliest opportunity. They're guests of Aunt Effie, Gareth. That's for her to say. Well, if we're leaving, you're coming with us. Maybe it would be better for us all to leave, Charlie. All this excitement can't be good for Lady Euphemia. We'll leave first thing in the morning. If you think you should. Well, I don't think that's such a good... Come on, Charlie. I think we all need some sleep. We have to wait till morning, can't I? I'm sorry, Jane. I'm only thinking of Aunt Effie. Perhaps it is best. But I'm staying. That is, of course, entirely up to you. Good night. Jenny should come with us. I'm going to stay. It's my house, and it's my ghost. Fine. in luck with your old professor. Aunt Effie, honestly. Just a little teeny bit. I know I should be if I was your age. You're wicked, Aunt. <laughs> Nothing wrong with love, my dear. Taken in small doses. <laughs> now walk through the beam. Should I jibber? No. You got a jibber. Walk. <laughs> Oh, you got me bright. Phipps, what the devil? Do me, ghost. <laughs> Can we have the light on there, Governor? Yes. It works. The next photograph won't be of Phipps. You did it. You actually photographed the ghost. How? My infraspectrum film. It records electromagnetic radiations, even in the dark. I'll trigger the shutter with my automatic eye. You won't be needing me there, will you? No, Phipps. I'm doing this myself. No, sir. I'm going with you. Four eyes are better than two. And what if the ghost comes back to the church? I could be waiting there. All right, Charlie. But you wait in the church. Right. Well, that settles it. I'll wait here.
They've locked the door. Sensible girl. What is that? I've come to photograph the ghost. There, carry that. And follow me. Sir, I could have had a fit. What are you doing here? Why did you think I was Crabtree? That Crabtree's an old devil. And he won't let us out at night. Well, a girl has to have a bit of fun sometimes, don't she, sir? Of course, but... Oh, it'll be our little secret. The witching hour. Or thereabouts. Scientist. Luck has nothing to do with it. No. I mean, yes. Jenny. If the ghost appears tomorrow night. Yes? I want you to follow it. Yes, there's an image. We've got it. Goodness. Don't go back to that place again. We certainly do, Phipps. Tonight. The only question is, how are we all going to get back into that house? That's easy. There's a secret passage. What? The maids use it to sneak out at night. Leads from inside the church straight into the house. Charlie, if ever I've been a little short or sniffy, let's see the photograph. Blimey, there's a ghost. That's not a ghost, Phipps. It's real, it's solid. Someone very much alive. Who is it? Someone within the house who is determined to harm Jenny. The solicitor said at my age my will ought to be revised every year. I thought that was rather indelicate of him. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, there are only a few small changes. I, I've discussed them with Gareth, of course, and, and Caroline. I told her that we expect her to live forever. Oh. <laughs> And if you have no children, then... I think we understand that. 
why I think we all understand quite completely. Absolutely. It's getting late, Aunt. You need your rest. I'll call Minnie. Good night, Aunt. Good night. Keep well. your ghost. I'm glad. So 
very glad. And I hope she rots in hell. Jenny's fine. The chandelier missed her. No, I don't believe you. No. There you come <laughs> a bad breakdown. Caroline will be in the home. Well, for quite a long time. It's all come as rather a horrid shock. Mm. There's always been bad blood in that side of the family. The mother used to have hysterics in church. Very vulgar. And poor Gareth. We'll keep his nose to the grindstone. That'll be the best thing for him. I'm going to stay here, Aunt. To look after the house and everything. You certainly are not. <coughs> Minnie, one of my cough lozenges. But I insist. Crabtree and I can run this house like clockwork. Always could. Now, my dear, you go back to your old professor. He needs you far more than I do. Maybe this film needs a greater sensitivity curve. A filter. Seems strange. Thanking someone for saving one's life. <laughs> he didn't save your life. You all did as you were told for once. There was never any danger. No danger. Come off it, Governor. This old ticker, Mr. B or two, I can tell you. That ghost looked real enough to me. Nothing but a good trick, Phipps. She opened that concealed panel and stood behind a transparent tapestry. And then she very slowly turned up the lamp she had beside her. The effect was, well, ghostly. QPT. Don't I get any tea, Phipps? Too bad she had to be a real woman. The Hudson Lou. Ο Ναπολέον Βοναπάρτης είναι πλέον εξόριστος στο νησί της...